Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Very good. Okay. What's happening? Uh, I'm sitting with you. Been looking forward to eating some nice food. Okay, that's nice. Oh, yum. I love dim sum actually. I'd love some. I think I'll get that. Good morning. Can I get some dim sum? And uh, orange is good. Thanks. So you grew up in Pondicherry. I did. When you moved to Bombay, uh, was the city very overwhelming for you? No, because I'd already travelled a lot by then. So yes, I did grow up fully in the jungle between the Nilgiris. I was in boarding school in Uti and uh, Pondicherry. I really had a beautiful sort of natural, sustainable environment to grow up in. Um, but I, I also lived in London. Uh, I went to study uh, drama there. I lived in Bangalore. Uh, you know, my dad's business was based in Bangalore before that in Coimbatore, before that in Mysore. So I've been in a lot of uh, cities uh, before that. Okay, I really want to ask you, are you more like Natasha from Zindagi Na Mile Ki Tobara or Aditi from Ye Jawani? Oh dear God, I hope for the sake of my family and friends, I'm more like Aditi. <laughs> I am, I'm more like Aditi. <laughs> you do look like one. Like yeah, like, I grew up yeah. tomboyish and uh, turned into this like beautiful girl uh, later in life. I think I was quite an awkward teenager and then, you know, suddenly something happened uh, and uh, I had like, you know, uh, my teeth got straightened, and with, you know, with my uh, with my braces and everything, suddenly like transformed. So, yeah, it was it was a, it was quite a aditi uh, journey. And shoot wise, uh, which film did you enjoy more? Ye Jawani hai Diwani. It was literally a r road trip. Ayan Mukherjee had thrown us all in a car uh, before we started shooting. Um, he, we could have taken a flight, but he decided from I think it was from Delhi to Chandigarh or something. He had decided that we go in the car uh, so that we get to know each other, um, oh. all four of us, you know. So, so cool. I, it was just like from day one, we were on this road trip together and we ended up having a lot of fun, especially in Manali. Oh, <laughs> how was Manali? Manali was great. Manali was uh, super. We used to like, go for these long walks, jump into like ice cold waterfalls. How has uh, being someone with the French roots shaped your career in Bollywood? I'm the only one. <laughs> it kind of helps. <laughs> There's nobody else like me in That's Bollywood. True. That's true. Um, Was it difficult or easy? Because sometimes it can actually work in your favor and sometimes it can be very difficult. It's to a crack. bit of both. I think that uh, mostly it, it gives me an advantage because I am different from the others around. But at the same time, of course, you don't fit into so many categories. Um, people don't think of, and people think of you only for certain categories. I'm not going to play a Bihari gaon wali ladki. So yeah, you, you do, you are limited by the way you look. When I first came to the industry, people not really knowing my background and asking me, do you like India? Do you like it here? And, oh. You know, like just the, do you like yeah. spicy food? And always treating me like a foreigner and yes. me having to like explain that I'm born Fine. here, brought up here. I feel like that's always going to be something I have to do just because it's so rare to see a white Indian. It is. It's just not common. You have a lot of American Indians. How Mindy Kaling is American, I'm Indian. That's true. Right? Yeah. But we don't think of a Mindy Kaling as not being American. Correct. She's American. So she's born true. there, brought up there. That's She's American. And yet, when I say I'm Indian, people are like, oh, which part of your family is Indian? But you're not. You don't have uh -huh. any roots here. And I'm like, I'm born here, I'm brought up here, my whole life has been here, so yeah. How do I speak Tamil? That's really like yeah. always a shocker for people. Can I say something in Tamil? Tamil, I'm going to say something in Tamil. There's a movie called Tamil. There's a movie called So it's, it's, a, it's a movie that I'm doing in South that's coming out soon. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's called Nesi Paya. Okay. Yeah. And what character are you playing in that? I am playing like a like uh, the hero sidekick. <laughs> if you have to pick one favorite city of yours in India. Uh, it's a tough one. My favorite city in India. I actually really like Bangalore because my dad was uh, there for a very long time for his mm -hmm. work. And it was my teenagers were spent in Bangalore. I really enjoyed growing up in Bangalore. I really enjoyed this kind of, firstly this like rock culture that Bangalore had. I think I, I really, kind of resonated with the music styles, the, the kind of live bands that were there. Um, and yeah, it has that nice 
kind of mix of modern and traditional that I enjoy. I think many people have asked you this. Your surname often gets a lot of attention because of its pronunciation. So I want to know what's the funniest way someone has pronounced your surname? Well, it's rather vulgar, but Coughlin. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, there's, there's, it's just spelt in such a way that it's easy to pronounce it that way. <laughs> but it's Kekla, like Kekla, for me. And yeah. then it's Kalki, Kekla. Like. Aaj ki nahi kalki. Yeah. <laughs> tell me something about your daughter, Safu. Wow, what to tell you? It's like a new universe in my life. Um, I think life has become much more detailed since she's been around. She has this whole set of uh, stuffed toys. You know, um, there's monkey, giraffe, there's there's uh, some characters, different mm -hmm. types of uh, characters, Moana, uh, Einstein. So she has this whole uh, band and she calls them her children. What's the quirkiest thing she's done that made you think, yes, she's my daughter? Uh, so she she recently in school, um, they're, they're preparing for Teacher's Day. And so they're doing one dance with music and all, and they have to do all these movements and da, and, da. and she's just halfway through. She just like sits down, takes off her shoes. It's like bored to death. <laughs> I was like, that's my daughter. If your life were a Bollywood film, yes, what would the title be, and who would play you in the biopic? It would be called Made in India, and I think I have to get a Caucasian actor because I'm Caucasian. So let's just pick the best, Emma Stone. Mm. Emma Stone can play me, no <laughs> <Nice>. problem. <laughs> Frenchies or Mumbai street food? That's a tough one. I love both. They're both smelly and delicious. Uh, your favorite cuisine? Again, I think there's so many. Um, it's hard to choose. Let's let, let's do it like a meal, okay? Starters, main course, and desserts. So starters would be um, Middle Eastern. Like your hummus, baba ganoush, and all, like uh, tabule. And then uh, my main course would be Indian for sure. Mm -hmm. There's so many different choices. And my dessert would be French. Talking about food, I think your food is your. Oh, wow. Exciting. So you can start mm -hmm. eating while we chat. Okay. Tell me about since it all, you're eating now. Tell me, do you like, do you enjoy cooking? Do I enjoy cooking? Yeah, if I have a gun to my head. <laughs> what would you cook? I don't know, patriarchal potluck? <laughs> <laughs> um, I cook up bedtime stories for my daughter. <laughs> Actually, no. My brother just married, I mean, he's married to a Japanese woman. And so he taught me how to make sushi, which is pretty impressive. I can now make sushi at home. and I. When I'm feeling generous, I do that for my family. If you were stuck on a deserted island and could only bring three things with you, mm. what would they be and phones not allowed? Yeah, it would be a hammer, a nail and a sign that says trespassers will be prosecuted. Because who gets a desert island in these days? It's a luxury. What's the most ridiculous or funny thing you have ever searched online? the names of my co-actors that when I'm halfway through a series. Really? Do you want to oh tell the Oh my god, who's news? this person? Uh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Nilesh. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just have a lot of people on set, you know, and you're just like, I sh I'm sorry, I, I can't remember everybody's names. Especially on a, on a thing like uh, Made in Heaven. You know, this is a big cast. You can't possibly remember everybody. So sometimes I've got to Google. I have a proper like, sort of anxiety to go to these Bollywood events and all. It's just like I, I, I get a blur. Everything, everyone, I'm just like, who the hell is everybody? And I, I found, I looked it up and it's called prosopognosia, where you cannot uh, fit the name to the face, you know? So you mix people's the names and faces all the time. What is it called? Proso? Prosopognosia. So now yeah. when I mess up, which I do, sometimes really badly, I just say, I'm really sorry, I have prosopognosia. And they're much more forgiving because it's like a, you know, it's a it's a condition. <laughs> it's yeah. not, not just me being like, you know, rude or, you know, yeah, absent-minded. Okay. I think you've, um, I mean, tons of people must have asked you this question about Eiffel Tower and the connection with your grandfather. Would you like to tell us? My great-grandfather's brother mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he was the chief engineer on the Eiffel Tower. I imagine I don't even get a discount when I go to the Eiffel Tower. How many times have you gone there? Twice. Once when I was 14, once now. I mean, once you've seen the Eiffel Tower, you've seen the Eiffel Tower, you've taken the selfie, what for? Or kya karin? What's on your travel bucket list? Oh man, I have so many places I, I want to go to. There are some that are really far-fetched, like, uh, you know, South America. I would love to go to Brazil and Peru. Uh, but it's just so far and I feel like I need to block out that one or two months to do that. Um, same with New Zealand and Australia. I've never been. Um, I've been to Japan twice. My now that I have family there, I, I I have, but I love it, and I can go again and again. And I want to go more to like some other countries. I, I'd love to go to Cambodia. Uh, I haven't been to the Andamans. I want to go diving there. What do you like about Japan? The food or the culture or everything? It's just very different in every way. It's just a completely different dunya and. Um, I do like the silence. Mm. Everything is electrical there. There's not a single uh, engine sound, you know? And I find that amazing. Like in Kyoto, it's just like silent. And generally people are quiet mm. and even in a very bustling city. And I find that magical that yeah. they can function like that. Your favorite spots in Mumbai? Mm. My favorite spots in Mumbai. I just, I love my area, which is uh, the whole Versova. Uh, that's my neighborhood. Mm. So I, I, if I walk down the streets, I'll always meet someone I know, uh, which is nice. It's nice to have a neighborhood where you know people. Uh, we have a chat. The dog walker knows me. You know, like everybody's like catching up uh, on those streets. So that's kind of nice to have your neighborhood. Um, and uh, glamorous or excited by a new place, then I go to the town because <laughs> uh, the streets are very walkable. They have pavements in town. Yeah. Uh, so that can be nice. Something that you love about Bombay? When I come to Bombay, I complain about all of these things, the garbage, the traffic, the pollution. But actually, it's it reminds me that no matter who you are, where you get in life, we are all exposed to the same world. Uh, and Bombay has a way of bringing everyone to a level like it's still you can still walk on the streets you know like I feel Delhi doesn't have that like you don't really get to know your neighborhood everyone travels in a car if you're of a certain class or privilege and here I feel like that gets broken down I take rickshaws I chat with the rickshaw guy you know I feel that 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 level level-headedness is, is really alive in Bombay mm -hmm.